Jerome Powell made another appearance to reassure America that everything is great, that the economy is in great shape, thanks to the Fed. The Federal Reserve is on the job, making sure that everything is good. But no need to worry, because the Fed is on the job. And I think Powell finished off the interview with a guarantee. And his guarantee was that the Fed will support the economy for as long as it takes to complete the recovery. So there you have it. Don't worry. This recovery is guaranteed by Chairman Powell, chair of the Federal Reserve itself. So you can take that to the bank. We've got a government guaranteed recovery because the Fed will do everything it can to make sure we complete this recovery. The problem is the Fed doesn't actually have the power to do anything other than create inflation, which of course is the one thing the Federal Reserve is assuring us is not a problem and it won't happen, at least not above 2%. But the idea that the Fed can create economic growth, can create prosperity, when it boils down to it, the only thing it can do is print money, however you want to describe it, that does not create prosperity. What creates economic prosperity is savings and investment and the production that it allows. So it's the free market and capitalism that can lead to prosperity and a true economic recovery. The Fed doesn't provide any of that. All the Fed can do is temporarily create the illusion of a recovery by creating inflation. But eventually the illusion wears off and all that's left is the dark reality of stagnation and in fact worse, depression, which is where we're headed. In fact, I've been saying we're headed for an inflationary depression and that's exactly what is going to happen. And again, remember, and I've been repeating this often, but in the early stages of the 2008 financial crisis, in fact, before it became a crisis, the Federal Reserve was reassuring everybody that the problems in subprime were contained. And so we had nothing to worry about. It was not going to spill over into the overall economy. And Powell made the same assurances to the nation again last night that we don't have to worry about inflation to the extent that we see a pickup. It's transit inflation is not going to stay above 2% for long. In fact, Powell said that he wants to see inflation moderately above 2% for some time. He didn't quite specify what sub time actually means. He did say he just wants to make sure that inflation averages 2%. And since it's been below 2% for a few years, well, obviously we need to be above 2% in order to create an average. But Powell is assuring everybody that there is nothing to worry about. Well, inflation is every bit as transitory as subprime was contained. The Fed was wrong then, and they are even more wrong now. Now, one of the things that Powell was specifically asked about was his forecast for GDP growth for 2021. And instead of basically coming up with his own forecast, he kind of deferred to forecasts that he was reading in the private sector, many of which are very self-serving because they're written by firms that have a vested interest in you know, a strong economy, or at least pretending that there's a strong economy. But he referenced forecasts of 6 to 7% GDP growth for 2021. And in fact, he indicated that the actual growth rate may be even higher than 7%. And as far as unemployment, he said he expects it to fall from its current rate of about 6%. Now, of course, that excludes all the people who are out of the labor force and are not looking for work, right? The real unemployment rate, as Powell has even noted himself, uh, is above 10%. Again, look at the U6 number, which is north of 10%. But on 60 Minutes, he only referenced the 6% number and ignored the more relevant higher number. But Powell said the forecast that he's reading, and I guess that the Fed agrees with, sees unemployment dropping to between 4 and 5% from its current 6% level. So a lot of people are going to get jobs. The unemployment rate is going to come down. And according to the guy who was interviewing, he actually said, hey, it sounds like you're forecasting a boom. And Powell didn't use the word boom himself. His reply was, yes, I'm forecasting very strong growth. So he didn't say boom, but CBS said boom. And he didn't really say, no, 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 it's not going to be a boom. He just didn't use that word. So we're going to have an economic boom. We're going to have soaring growth. We're going to have falling unemployment, but we're not going to have any inflation, right? And of course, one of the things that CBS never mentioned 
was all the money printing. I mean, they did talk about QE or mention QE, but they didn't focus on the money printing. They didn't focus on the budget deficits, but you can't really have a discussion of inflation without bringing up those main points of big budget deficits getting monetized by the Fed. So there wasn't even a discussion about that. So they simply talked about rising prices and didn't really discuss the factors that lead prices to go up. So they just kind of said, why aren't we going to have inflation? And of course, Powell said, well, you know, we have a new type of economy. It's different this time. We can have all this growth. We can have low unemployment, but we're not going to have the type of inflation that we've had in the past. And he specifically referenced, you know, the 1960s and the 1970s as examples that we're not going to follow. Because unlike the 60s and the 70s, we're not going to have inflation in the 2020s because we've got this new economy. Before we continue, help us by smashing that YouTube like button and subscribe now to this channel. This shows the algorithm that you value the information and it helps us spread this message. Sharing is caring. Please like and subscribe now. Thank you. And now let's continue. And in fact, when specifically asked about why, right, what Powell said was that in this modern global economy, and of course, we've always had a global economy. I mean, maybe now it's more global than it was in the past, but we've always had trade. I mean, going back to the birth of the Republic, uh, we've been trading with other nations. In fact, we were trading with, with the Indian tribes, which were considered to be their own nations, but we've always been a trading society. And even before America, uh, there was always world trade. Right. It just maybe didn't happen as rapidly, but we still had inflation. But the points that Powell was trying to make or made was that he thinks that this global competition is the reason that businesses can't raise prices. He says you can't raise prices anymore because of global competition. He also says that you can't raise wages. I guess workers can't demand higher wages because their employers will just go overseas and hire somebody cheaper. But the fact of the matter is that's not true. I mean, prices are going up. Wages are going up. I mean, certainly in nominal terms. But one thing that Powell maybe is confused on is that yes, the way globalization has offset the impact of inflation, meaning the expansion of the money supply on consumer prices is in order to keep from raising their prices American businesses have moved more and more of their manufacturing to foreign countries where the production costs were lower. So it was the increased reliance on foreign production that enabled U.S. businesses to offset the price increases that otherwise would have resulted from the inflation that the Federal Reserve was creating. But the result of that was huge trade deficits. It was America moving from the world's biggest creditor nation to the world's biggest debtor and for a real reduction of wages for Americans because a lot of those manufacturing jobs, in order to keep a lid on prices, were sent abroad. And so the Americans were left to do the lower paying service sector jobs. But I think that process has pretty much worked its way out. And therefore, it is no longer going to be there the way it was in decades past. In other words, we're not going to have this get out of jail free card when it comes to the impact of inflation on prices, because we're not going to see more manufacturing jobs or a lot more moved abroad because most of them have already moved abroad. And the fact of the matter is our trading partners already have way more U.S. treasuries than they want, especially considering that they don't even have any yield anymore. So I think our ability to export in inflation is much smaller now than it was in the past. And there's a lot more inflation that we need to export. The amount of money that the Fed is creating is far greater today than it has been in the past. And so we have to be able to export even more dollars. We have to run much bigger trade deficits in order to offset it. Now we are, we do have record trade deficits, but they're not going to be big enough because the world is not going to support this indefinitely. In fact, I think it's going to come to an end soon. In fact, I think it's already happening and we are going to see big price increases despite globalization and wage increases too, because what is also going to be accelerating the pressure on wages is competition with the government, because the government is offering such sweetheart deals to people who don't go to work that in order to get a worker to give up all those unemployment benefits, businesses are going to have to pay much more to get those workers. And as a result, their customers are going to have to pay much more for the goods or services that those workers help produce or provide because 
plus it's going to cost businesses that much more money to get them on the job. So if Powell thinks that the lesson of the past decade or two is that it doesn't matter how much money we print, we're never going to see increases in prices. He's sorely mistaken. And of course, all of the discussion on 60 Minutes about is there going to be inflation misses the point that we have massive inflation already. I mean, that's what's going on uh, with the Fed. That's what's happening with the money supply, the balance sheet. This is unprecedented inflation. So the real discussion is when will this inflation come back to bite Americans in a way that really hurts? Now, when it bites Americans by making their stock portfolios go up or their house more valuable, they don't actually mind that. In fact, many people like that because they think they're a lot richer. The problem is when inflation causes your cost of living to go up, when it makes food more expensive, when it makes clothing, when it makes energy, when it makes healthcare and all these other things that people need, that's when it's a big problem. And we're about to experience that problem in spades. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with firsthand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just one dollar. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands, but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.